In this first ever episode of In the Trenches by Basement Brood Fantasy Football, I sit down with Lane Taylor, a former NFL offensive lineman who spent nine years in the NFL, eight of which were spent with the Green Bay Packers protecting future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers. And you better believe we talked about what it was like playing with number 12. But we also talked about pretty much everything under the sun. We talked about Lane's journey to the NFL, his time spent in the NFL, and of course, his time spent with the Green Bay Packers. We talked about barbecue. We talked about his favorite Disney princesses, his favorite Pokemon. We talked about whether or not the NFL rigs football games. And of course, we talked about fantasy football. And if you didn't know, Lane himself is a subscriber to Basement Brood Fantasy Football. All of that and more coming up on this very first episode of BBFF's In the Trenches. my friend it's mikey from basement brood fantasy football thank you so much for tuning in to what might go down as my favorite episode which is the first episode of the entire year uh the first episode of bbffs in the trenches something that my very first guest knows quite a bit about he spent his entire career in the nfl in the trenches lane what's up buddy how you doing today what's going on man thanks for having me on yeah man Happy to have you here. So if anybody's listening, Lane and I were texting before the uh, before the show began, and Lane's not feeling too hot today, so he's powering through this. This is the <laughs> Michael Jordan, Lane Taylor flu game type deal that yeah, we're doing flu here. Flu so. podcast right here. <laughs> I'll he make told, it, I'll and make he told it. me too. If it, he, he told me too that if this was the Super Bowl, he probably wouldn't be playing, but he had to make sure that this podcast happened. So he's he's powering exactly through. spot on. <laughs> but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Yeah, man. So I wanted to start this thing off with your journey, dude. I think your story is awesome. Like you, you, I told the audience a little bit about your story before this episode began. I kind of recorded something separate, but you know, working your way from an undrafted free agent back in 2013 out of Oklahoma state, suddenly you're playing a hundred percent of the offensive snaps blocking for a future hall of famer and Aaron Rodgers by the year 2016. And again, I told the audience a little bit about this stuff, but they don't want to hear it from me, dude. They want to hear it from you. So give us give us a little bit of a background of your life story and how uh, how it's all kind of run over the years. Um, you know, just I mean, take it all the way back to high school. I was just kind of a big kid that liked to play football. And I mean, the culture around our football team wasn't great. And, you know, and no one really took it serious, but whenever we had new coaches come in and everything and they really like turned around the, the, uh, the program and, and got me a scholarship, went to Oklahoma state. Awesome. There was great, you know, obviously everyone knows Gundy, great coach, great strength and conditioning yeah. coach and like really built me up and, you know, got me right for the NFL. But even when I got to the NFL, I had to, I had to, figure things out and it took a few years and I had great bets with TJ Lane, Josh Sitton, Balaga. Like there were so many good people and in, in place when I got there, yeah. which was really a big part of my development. And then, you know, once I got my opportunity, you know, I, I, I took it. Yeah, man, that's, that's awesome. Every, it's easy to root for stories like that too. And how did, how did Oklahoma state come to be your school of choice? Was it, was it a pretty heavy selection process? What's like, what led you to Oklahoma state? Well, I had about nine different offers, but the top two were Kansas and Oklahoma State, which at the time was when Mangino was there. So Kansas was actually a pretty good option versus, you know, I guess the past yeah. decade. And uh, but it just felt like I felt like I was at home when I went there and it ended up being perfect. I met my wife there, graduated from there. We were super successful as a team and as an individual. So it was a perfect fit. That's awesome, man. Love to hear it. I uh, <laughs> one question I just thought of that I wanted to ask is if it's it, has it always been offensive line for you or like sometimes you see you watch an NFL pro, uh, 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 an NFL <laughs> broadcast and they show like uh, like Derrick Henry out there throwing touchdown passes and like guys who played quarterback or <laughs> or linebacker. Yeah. What 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 have you been playing? Well, 
I ran the ball when I played flag football. And then once I hit uh, fifth grade, I barely could make the weight limit. And I've been off as a lineman ever since. So there was really not much uh, <laughs> variance for me. <laughs> Dude, run it. I can imagine like you being in, in what well, you're talking about flag football, but if it was tackle at that age, ain't, there's nobody tackling Lane Taylor if he's running with the football. Javorski Lane out there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. So so what's next for you? Um, is there any desire for you to get back into the game, whether it's coaching, broadcasting, being a full time on Basement Brood Fantasy Football? I don't know. Like what's next for you mm-hmm. uh, after uh, in, as it pertains to life after football? Um, you know, I'm just going to see, you know, see what comes to me, you know, coaching isn't bad. Um, I don't think I would, you know, college or NFL would be a good fit for me, but, um, you know, I'll just see what I like. I like doing a little barbecue in my spare time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got four kids, so my life's already pretty busy. (laughs) (laughs) You, I I was actually going to ask you, how old are your kids? Uh, 10, seven, six, and three. All boys, girls, good mix. Uh, two boys, two girls. All right. Yeah, man. I got a seven-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. So you're you know what those ages are like, man. It's oh yeah, absolutely. We're in it right now. <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit busy. Uh, so I think I told you this prior, but I actually in promoting this episode, I put out on all my social media channels, inviting people, all different people in the audience, to like bring them, bring your questions. Uh, one of the audience members, her name's Rita Kalinsky. She wants to know if you never made it to the NFL, what do you think you would be doing or what would hit your career have been if you didn't make it to the NFL? Man, that's a really good question. <laughs> I really, to tell you the truth, I never really had a plan B. That's um, awesome. A lot of it did come to me. Uh, I didn't really have a plan A either. <laughs> I was like, you know, <laughs> just kind of float through life a little bit. But I mean, I was always like very like, mechanical and stuff so maybe with cars or just some probably something working on my hands of some sort love that dude in fact uh one of my questions that i have on here my dad huge car guy like ever since i've i've can remember he's been building engines and restoring cars his i always joke that his his son he never had is his 84 camaro which is a joke obviously (laughs) he loves me and he's proud of me and everything but he loves that car he's had that ever since i was a kid what's your fate like do you have a a a car that's like the Lane Taylor car that's like your favorite of all time, or uh, I got two of them, and I actually own them. Um, if you know me from like back in like college, or I guess a little bit of high school, um, I have a '72 Chevelle that I. Oh, all right. Um, and I re- I restored it originally, like in high school, and then I drove it all through college in my first year in Green Bay. Actually, I guess until winter hit, and. Uh, and, and then I re-restored it again later on in my career when I obviously I had a lot more money than I did in high school. Um, did it right. It's pretty pretty slick now. Uh, and then I've always you wanted got it? a 66. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it in, I got it in uh, the garage right now. All right. <laughs> and then I have a 66 Chevelle that I've always wanted. And my godfather actually owned one. And I was like, man, if you ever sell that car, let me know. Let me know. And then, sure enough, last year he sold it. He sold it to me, and and so I got that in the garage too. That's awesome. I love that, and it's interesting that you drove that in Green Bay because I thought all you drive are like little kids' bikes. In yeah, Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way we Did really you? get get around. <laughs> yeah, no, I drove sure. it. I drove it until like I think the season. Then I was able to get like a dealer car, and uh, and kind of had like this red Tahoe for like a year. Love it, man. That's awesome. All right, dude, let's, uh, I want to talk to you about barbecue. I know you're a huge, huge, huge barbecue guy. In fact, anybody who's close to me, like all my friends, family, they know this story. So I'll, I'll tell it real quick, but Lane and I actually started talking on Instagram probably like a year or two ago because he posted on his story. I'm a big Packer fan and I follow pretty much every Green Bay Packer, Lane Taylor included. And, uh, he posted this banging looking, uh, smoked queso recipe yeah. like two years ago and I, I slid into his dms i don't know if i use that <laughs> term right probably not but i slid into the dms and i was like yo let me get that recipe big dog and lane didn't hesitate for a second he hooked me up with the queso recipe and now yeah. like every game day anytime there's a party i make it and everybody thinks it's my world famous queso so i'm here to tell the world that's not mine that is lane taylor's recipe that i yeah. stole um 
everything down to the meat church seasoning that you told me about and you're which by the way i just got to tell a real quick story on that when you told me that they sell them at ace hardware i was like is this dude's trolling me there's they don't have stuff like that at ace hardware i go walking i I go walking into the local one and the guy looks at me and he's like he's he goes uh hey man can i help you and i'm like yeah this might sound like a stupid question but i'm looking for a seasoning called meat church and the guy goes ah like yeah, like i just unlocked some sort of like like i just l- unlocked some sort of hidden room inside of ace hardware but yeah. anyway so <laughs> i started talking to lane because of if you don't follow lane change that like follow him on instagram because he's constantly posting all these yeah. amazing like, like recipes and like everything he's doing on the big green egg and smoked meats and i'm constantly hungry but anyway let's talk <laughs> about it real quick i know you're a big you're a big barbecue guy yeah is that a has that become a business for you? Like, are you doing anything from a business standpoint, or is it a hobby? What's what's kind of your your stance in the barbecue world? Um, at the moment, it's a hobby. Um, met a lot of good people with it. Um, actually, know the owner of Meat Church, Matt Pittman. He's he's an awesome dude, and a whole bunch of other you know awesome cooks and stuff. And and you know and like it's a big world, but it's a little community when it comes to the barbecue world. So like once you know like one guy, you know a lot of guys and. And it's something yeah. fun to do, and honestly, the reason why I started was like in, in like in like 2018, like I had like that little like classic like electric smoker you get from Cabela's, and like okay. the barbecue I was making off of there was better than I was getting anywhere in Green Bay. And then my wife was like, "We don't eat good barbecue ever. Like your barbecue is way better than." than anything here in town so then you know being a texas boy i'm like all right let's go then so <laughs> i just started cooking like crazy you know I, I grew up cooking a little bit like i cooked for my dad and um when i was younger and we did like some competitions as kid cooks but i kind of lost it over the years just because the football kind of took over my life and just didn't have time to you know grill nor do you want to grill when you're right. like 18 years old <laughs> so <laughs> you want to eat um, so, but yeah yeah exactly that's all i want to do is eat so i kind of found that found my my passion again and and i uh, started cooking man it's i i'll tell you dude i followed you for the packers in the football and i stayed for the the barbecue and everything that you post on your story there we go there we go (laughs) nice uh speaking of instagram spaceman barbecue spaceman bbq wants to know what's your favorite food favorite food well obviously the layup would have to be barbecue but you know if i had to go another food i really i enjoy pizza i really do A a good a good pie i mean it doesn't matter deep dish pizza hut uh thin crust new york like Oh yeah, I'm down for what's pizza. The, all right, what's the perfect what's the perfect pizza as far as like toppings go? You know what? For me, I'm simple. Pepperoni, sausage, home run for me. That's it. Yep. No kidding. Yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's basic, all I need. I didn't I didn't take you for basic when it comes to pizza. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> that's awesome, man. All right, cool. Uh, real quick, best food in Green Bay. Like, wh- what? Where? If you're if somebody's going to Green Bay, where should they be eating? You got to go play bistro. Play bistro. Where? Play bistro. Play bistro. Oh yeah, that's Got our spot. It. We love play bistro. Um, anytime we went to Appleton, we went to a, a Melty Pot. That was that was really my wife and I's spot for like the longest. We really? Melty, Melty Pot. Pot. No kidding. I All mean, right. plus it's like a it's like a three hour dinner. You like you don't have to put the kids to bed. You have the babysitter, so it was like it was perfect for us. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Are you a wing guy at all? You like wings? Oh yeah, I'm American. I know. <laughs> so I was actually asked recently on LinkedIn, I did a ask me anything and somebody asked me to rank my top five wings as, as far as like flavors go. What do you got as far as top five, maybe top three? The top three uh, and yeah, staying a little basic, you know, a little hot barbecue. That's my favorite. Yep. Garlic palm. Can't beat a good garlic palm wing. All right. Last question on that. Have you had the garlic palm over at AC tap? I know AJ Dillon, like that's his spot up in door county did you ever go there no i didn't i spent a little time in door county but not a whole bunch so apparently i have not been there but my buddy insists that they got the best car- garlic parmesan wings which is on my list but i gotta <laughs> get up there anyway no. lego seinfield on instagram wants to know do beans belong in chili you know what 
down here in Texas, it's, it's a controversy. You know, do you put beans and no beans? I mean, to tell you the truth, like, as long as it's good, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> you know, I mean, not too many beans. If you put too many beans in chili, it's too much. But, I mean, right. it's good. Shoot, sign me up. I'll eat it. Let's go. All right. I'm team pro beans. I'm good with it. Okay. Like, give me all, give me all the beans. There you go. Man, all this uh, all this barbecue talk, it's making me, I feel like I'm gaining weight just thinking about it. So let's chat real quick about losing weight for good. Sustain Health and Performance and their owner, Jordan Poggle, are the go-to resource for Basement Brood Fantasy Football subscribers that are looking to lose weight and keep it off for good. In fact, one BBFF subscriber lost over 30 pounds in their first four months working with Jordan, and I myself worked with Jordan when I needed to lower my cholesterol and lower my blood pressure. And by the way, I also accidentally lost 11 pounds, which was never the focus, but my wife isn't complaining at all. So if you're looking for a simple and a sustainable and an effective way where you can lose weight and, more importantly, keep it off for good all while performing your best every single day, then you need to contact Jordan. Get in touch with him on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or just follow the link that we left for you in the show notes to learn more about how he can work with you too. And when you do connect with him, let him know that Mikey sent you because BBFF subscribers get 10% off their first four months of working with Jordan. Um, all right, man, let's talk about fantasy football. I know uh, one of the questions I asked you a while back, just seeing if seeing if you're a player, obviously that's what I do for a living. When did you start playing fantasy football? Um, actually my, my rookie year was my first year. Um, oh, so happy. So I, we had one as a, as like a team and then we had one okay. and then I had, was in another league, which was with, uh, with my, like my cousins, like close family. Love it, dude. So, okay. I gotta, I gotta double click on the, the team ones. Cause I think there's a lot of us in the fantasy football community that wonder how often NFL players play the game <laughs> and, Candidly, I think there's a lot of us that wonder if it impacts their performance, not in a way where they'd like throw a game in order to yeah. like win or lose a fantasy football game. But I mean, how often did you see guys drafting themselves quickly or or see them motivated by having themselves on their own fantasy team? What did, what did you see? No, I, it doesn't like affect the players, but like it's a little sweeter, though, whenever you like, I guess if you were to have yourself in fantasy or like there was one year I had um, I had Aaron and um, Jordy, and like Jordy was going crazy oh, for like stacked. over a thousand. So every time he caught a <laughs> touchdown, like I was even more excited than he was that he scored a touchdown because I'm just like, all right, that's at least ten points right there. <laughs> like here we go, let's but, go. <laughs> well, that was going to be my question: is if you think of that in the game, like L Rogers hits eighty seven touchdown are you in the game like hell yeah 10, 10 like, fantasy points oh yeah i'm like man that was at least 15 right there like we're cooking <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's awesome uh what about what about today how many leagues in how many leagues are you playing in these days um i think i was i was a one or two less this year but like i was in like five or six different leagues all right. So what kind it's of league? Like just three? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they pretty yeah. standard leagues? Or are you doing any like dynasty? Are you doing best ball? Um, no best ball. But like there's one that we call the Vampire League, which is pretty sweet. Um, you get Hell to yeah. like choose a player you get to take from the other team if you win. So yeah. you have to have a strategy like do I you like, do I bench all my players or do I like go to like beat them? Cause you don't want to lose your playoff spot either. No. So for those of you listening or watching, if you haven't played in a vampire league yet, base long story short is everybody in the league drafts their team, except for one player, that player is the vampire. And then the vampire has to make their team up of whatever leftovers are left in the waiver pool. But when they win a game, they get to steal any player that they want. So if you have Christian McCaffrey and the vampire beats you, they can take Christian McCaffrey and there's nothing you can do about it. So if you haven't yeah. played in that league, that type of league, definitely, it's definitely a way to spice things up and make things fun. Lane, were you the vampire or were you? I you was one year. One year I had just a yeah. terrible season. It was just bad luck after injury, after a bad break. And I ended up being the vampire. I was like, I, I had one bad mistake. I chose Mike Evans over Higgins. 
and and then Higgins ended up having a good year, and and uh, that really killed me right there. I could have made the playoffs. Yeah. I probably would have. I probably would have won it all, but it didn't happen. It's hard to go against Mike Evans. Oh, what a decade straight of a thousand yard seasons. I mean, nobody, nobody can fault you for drafting that guy ever. He's a pretty good um, player. <laughs> who do you, who do you, do you play with any of the, any of your former teammates or anybody in the NFL? Who do you play with now in fantasy football? Names that we would know. Uh, just friends, family. I do have one with my kind of barbecue buddies on Instagram. So, um, All right. so just kind of friends, family. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Fletch.tcb on Instagram wants to know what's the highest round you'll draft a quarterback in fantasy football? You know what? After this year, I think the highest I'm drafting is, is uh, his third round. I kind of I went Pat Mahomes early. It yeah. didn't really He didn't really have a great year. And after that, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I usually never draft them high anyways in like this kind of split of right. third, third or lower. <laughs> third or lower. Yeah, man. All right. Um, what, uh, what websites do you subscribe to? What, what tools do you use, man? There's this really good one in like Milwaukee, I think Wisconsin in a basement <laughs> brewed fantasy football. They're pretty good, but nah, seriously, I did use your website and I did like the heat map and like, your stuff's legit and like and you have like a real good take on on stuff it's not just like you're not just spitting out numbers and just like oh you know and not considering anything else appreciate it man yeah i, I mean you had to know i was gonna just throw it in there you, you, gotta, about plug, it. you gotta plug it <laughs> you gotta plug it and i wore i wore the green and yellow bff hoodie for, specifically for this interview so lane taylor is obviously a fierce competitor who loves to win and that is what makes him a great fit for basement brood fantasy football lane is one of over 300 fantasy football players that like to outsmart their friends dominate their leagues win FanDuel and DraftKings contests and of course cash in on nfl bets and they do that using bbff's strategic insights resources and an amazing online community of over 300 other fantasy football players that are in there to ask each other advice, support big wins, and help each other dominate. Go to basementbroodff.com, choose the starter package to give it a try, and enter promo code in the trenches, all caps, all one word, in the trenches. And the first five people to use that promo code are going to get 20% off their subscription to the BBFF starter package. There you go. All right, man, let's talk ball specifically in the trenches, which is what this episode or this show is called. So Jason Molnar, <laughs> Magdy risk. There's a, one of the most popular questions that I got on Instagram and LinkedIn and everywhere I went looking for questions was some variation of who was one or more players that you went up against that just gave you nightmares. Like guys, you, Guys that were the toughest to block, guys you hated preparing for. Like you like we were talking yeah. earlier off camera, we were talking about hard knocks. And it's always funny listening to guys like Daniel in the new season talking like there's no way you're gonna be guarding Lamar Jackson. You just do the best you can, sort of thing. So yeah. what what guys did you come up against that just kind of gave you nightmares? <laughs> uh there's uh this one guy called Aaron Donald. He's he's known to be pretty good. He's and good. Uh, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he he's really good. I only played him once. I almost played him twice, but uh, th he was just he's just different. He's different than any other DT. His quickness, his his flexibility, his speed, his power is just it's you know like when you talk about generation talent, like he's the definition of it. Like you won't see another one of him for another ten years. So all like right. like he he's 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 that kind of guy. Who's the who's the best? trash talker talk some smack out there that you ever went up against man you know what i i forgot <laughs> it's bad i kind of forgot his name but <clears throat> he was in houston yeah uh, houston texas room it was like 2016 we played that snow game and that guy talked so much trash he said i held him allegedly but uh, <laughs> he talked trash the entire game. We just went at it, and it was—I mean, it was fun. But like, we we're just back and forth the entire game. All right. Well, I'm guessing you didn't hold them. I, I did a little bit of research. Not 87 enough. career games for Lane Taylor, five holding penalties. That's it Ooh, in 87 career games. That's insane, yeah. man. That's like I couldn't 
when I saw that, I'm like, this has got to be a typo because they, I mean, I feel like there's <laughs> holding penalties. There's got to be like five or six holding penalties every game, but I'm totally wrong about that. And by the way, just three false starts in nine years, which is considering you had Mr. Hart count uh, trying to yeah. get everybody off sides. And he's, you know, he fools offensive linemen from time to time. Yeah. Um, speaking of holding, Frank Sulka on LinkedIn says, I'd be curious to know how often offensive linemen actually hold. You hear all the time that if refs wanted to, they could call holding on every play. I don't know if that's true, but I'm guessing linemen sneak in more jersey tugs than they're called for. What's your What's your take on that? <laughs> I mean, in reality, yeah, we sneak in a few. I mean, there's I mean, there's some blind spots, and then like, and there's things that like, I mean, they the refs can't catch anything. Uh, they can't catch everything. I mean, they're human, and they have a right. lot of responsibilities. So like, like you can, but I mean, in reality, like every bad holding call pretty much gets called. I mean, for the most part, um, even though, sure. you, you know, maybe from like the fan angle, it looks like bad holding, but in like when you're down there, like close to the play, it doesn't look as bad as it might seem like on TV or in the stands. Um, yeah. So, I mean, for the most part, I mean, the reps call about every bad holding. So, and, you know, D linemen get away with things too. So I think it's, it's kind of, it all evens out at the end of the day. See, man, that's that. So I'm of the belief that like, unless it's egregious and like super obvious, let the let the boys play. Like we're not here to yeah. watch flags. We want we want to watch some football. Right. Yeah, there's going to be holding. Like you, every single snap, you got eleven, you got twenty two grown men pushing up against each other. They're going to grab a jersey from time to time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's always funny when you get on like Twitter and stuff after a game, and there's always people like they missed holding on this call, and it's like. There, you could go back for all sixty minutes, yeah. and you're going to see missed holding everywhere. You're going to see missed face masks and missed <laughs> pass interference. It's just, it's, it's a contact sport. Like they, unless yeah. it's obvious, let the boys right. play. I don't ser- know. Seriously, I know. And like in the in the game, so much a better product when you you don't have 150 penalties called a game, and you can just let the game flow. And even the players are going to play better if they can just play ball and not worry about yeah. every single ticky tack call. For sure, dude. And mm-hmm. we're, so we're actually going to talk about a growing conversation, but we're, we'll we'll get to that point when we get there. Um, Patrick Blaney wants to know, did you ever get more hyped to play a certain team or a certain player? Most pros say that it's just another game and no matter who's on the schedule that week. Uh, but there's got to be an opponent. So Patrick Blaney, Blaney believes there's got to be an opponent or a <laughs> player or a team that just ramped up the intensity. And I got to think if you're a Packers, maybe it's the Bears. But like in your experience, is there any team or player that just you got a little extra hyped for? Uh, you know, you, you definitely got to pull out the belt when you go against uh, the Bears. You know, let them know. <laughs> you got to give them yep. the beat down. But yep. uh I mean, you get a little more hype for your divisional games. You want to win those because one, they're important, and two, it's kind of like a like a respect thing. But like, I think whenever it gets crunch time, and you, you know, they always talk about like, oh, it's like a playoff game. Like the players, they play like it too, and like it, it like you could feel the pressure. Like this is a must win game, or like it's over, and and you play up, you play up to that expectation and in, in, in intensity too. That's awesome, man. Um, all right, let's talk about actually, no, one, one more question that I just thought of that I wanted to ask. There's a lot of people on on social media that seem to assume they know a lot more about football than football players do, right? Like everybody on social media is really good at knowing exactly what a general manager should do and what plays they should call. Like Kyle Shanahan is catching so much flack because the 49ers took the ball first and they didn't yada yada. Yeah. What if you could think of just one thing that the average football fan just doesn't know about or doesn't recognize about football or football players? Like what is that? For and I'll give you a really quick example. For me, I I try and remind people a lot of times on social media that football players are human beings. Like there's yeah. mistakes that are going to be made. You guys have four kids to worry about. Like you're not just, you're not a number on a spreadsheet or a number on a Jersey that goes out for people's fantasy football teams. Like it's fun and it's important. Like you got things to worry about. What's that's just my example being an NFL player. What's one thing that the average fan just doesn't know about. Maybe they don't see it. What's something that comes to mind there that, that you would want an average fan to, to know about the game that they just probably don't. 
Uh, I mean, you kind of hit it there. Like, like we're normal people too. We just like we're good at football. You know, <laughs> I mean, I know some people kind of come off as like rock stars or whatnot, but like we're all like, I mean, to tell you the truth, I mean, like ninety five percent of the league they're just like regular dudes just like you know they hang out in the locker room drink beers together like uh you know have fun together it's just like we're we're just good at football (laughs) and i guess we entertain so like there's really no difference all right all right all right dude i want to talk about specifically your time with the green bay packers okay there's there's a lot to talk about here so this is where i carved out the most time for a segment. So to start with John Kavanaugh on LinkedIn wants to know, and I feel like I know the answer, but I want to hear what you say. What makes green Bay slash Lambo slash Wisconsin. What makes that experience different than other teams and cities? And I know you spent one year with the Texans. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you've, you've been all over the place playing against other teams. What makes green Bay and Lambo and Wisconsin a little bit different? It's just, everyone is about football in Wisconsin. Like, I mean, it is the Green Bay Packers, right? Like, uh, and like, so, and when you leave, you really realize it. People are like, they're like, we were just driving, and then bang, there's just a stadium right there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that, like that's that's it. I mean, there's literally a regular neighborhood just right next to the Lambo in the parking lot, essentially, and just like everyone, all the fans are about Green Bay, and like that's what makes it special. Like, and I really, I went back and I did an alumni event. And it really like reminded me. I was like, because everyone like instantly knew who I was, and you know, I don't know, you just kind of assume like you've been gone for a few years, and like people would kind of be like, "Who is that?" But like as soon as you like step off the plane, like people will recognize you. They know who you are, and like they're faithful, and they know the team. They love the team. Yeah, man, that's that's always my favorite thing to hear people say. Like, yeah, I was just driving around, and there's a not only a stadium, but like one of the most legendary stadiums. Uh, Everybody always talks about it. And so I, I, I do have to ask, maybe it's just for my own like heart, but like you always hear every every team who wins the Super Bowl, the, the owner of the team steps up on the podium and says that we did it for the best fans in the world. Right. We get it. <laughs> but are the Packers, are Packers fans the best fans in the world? Easy, easy. Come on now. Is, is that even a question? <laughs> All right, man. OK, so this one's for me. I Eddie Lacy. Aaron Jones. Anybody who knows me personally knows that I like I was banging the table for the Packers to get those guys before then green and yellow. So when they drafted nice. those guys, holy crap, dude, was I excited. What yeah. uh I guess what could you tell me just personally about like who they are as a person? Is there one that you preferred like blocking for? I'd guess not, but they're two very different types of running backs. Just tell me yeah. tell me anything you can about Lacey and Jones. Um first of all the both awesome people, like super cool people. Like Eddie's, he's hilarious. He's like the most chill person in the world. You know, sure. he, he like he has that kind of infectious personality. You can kind of, you can kind of pick that up. Yeah. And, and like Aaron Jones is like the most awesome, solid dude you'll like ever you'll ever meet. But like I like blocking for him. Like they're too, you can't like compare them because they're two totally different. Like Aaron Jones is such a slasher, and then Eddie like was way more elusive than people gave him credit for, but like, you know, you, you love to see his power and you, and you, and you love to see like, people were scared to tackle Eddie, like, especially when he got cold. Oh, yeah. Like you could tell defenders, like they kind of come up and they're like, mm, you know, and you love to see that. Cause you're like, man, we can run the ball all day long. And so, um, yeah, man. those are like two great running backs to, to, uh, block for. They say they say that offensive linemen, specifically guards, love to run the ball way more than they like passing the ball. Is that true? Yeah, obviously. You don't have like these super athletic guys trying to, you know, get past you and get sacks and you can do celebrations on you. So it's a lot better just to uh, fire off the ball. You can try to smash them to the ground. Actually, you know, now that you said that, I never really thought of it that way, where if you're running the ball, you're kind of on the offensive. You're trying to create that yeah. lane, whereas if you're passing the ball, you're just you're playing defense. You're trying to protect, you know, protect 12 or protect the guy with the ball. So yeah. awesome, man. Good to know. All right. I, I have to ask this one. So if my wife ever left me, it would be for Jordy Nelson. OK, <laughs> she she's in love with Jordy. Uh, always has been. OK, obviously, yeah. we know the guy's a stud on the field. What can you tell us about Jordy the human? Oh, 
exactly what you think. He's like an awesome dude, country boy. Uh, <laughs> doesn't say a word. Like it was crazy because I, he, you know what? That was like the first guy I learned like how to be a pro from, because like I got there and like we watched t- we watched tape as an offense and like Jordy never said anything, but he would go out there and destroy people. Like you just like clip yep. after clip of him just destroying like every single corner we had, and then it was just like, and then he just went about his business, flipped the ball to the ref, and just like do 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 do, you know what I mean? Like he's not flexing, he's just yeah. he's just killing yeah. people, and and um, he's exactly what you think, just like super nice, kind person. Yeah, that's what I that's what I kind of figured. It's so crazy to think about that stretch of wide receivers that you guys had, where it was like. Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, and they were all they all kind of like ran into each other, which is just nuts, man. Um, yeah, that's great. All right. So you spent six with Mike McCarthy. You spent two yeah. years with Matt LaFleur. Did you enjoy playing for both those guys? Yeah, yeah, both of them were awesome. Um, yeah, I can't say a bad thing about either one of them, to tell you the truth. Like, they both were... And, like, you think about that, like, just the string of, like, quarterbacks Green Bay's had and, like, and now the coaches, like, it's insane to think that, you know, I mean, you know, Matt LaFleur ain't getting the love he needs, but, uh, you know, two, like, one of the better coaches that, that have been, like, through Green Bay. All right. Let's, let's double-click on McCarthy just for one second because uh, – Kids on Facebook wants to know your thoughts on Mike McCarthy as a head coach. More specifically, he mentions that the media and the fans seem to blame him for failures. I got I got to tell you, as a fellow Packer fan, I have heard friends and other Packers fans blame McCarthy, whether that's warranted or not. It's it's true that Packer fans do at times blame him for failures. Did the players ever want Green Bay to move on from Mike McCarthy? No, honestly, I didn't know anyone that wanted him fired. Um, he was a good dude. He'd stand up. He'd go to war for you. He'd stand up for you. If he believed in you, like, you're his guy. And um, and honestly, like, if you took care of business, he's going to take care of you. So um, he was a great coach. I'm glad I, I, I was able to play under him and, and had nothing bad to say about him. All right, man. Love it. All right, dude, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. I know anybody who's listening or watching is like, when is he going to ask this? When is he going to ask this? Mm. Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah. You protect, you, you <laughs> protected the guy for eight years. Um, yeah. He, you know, he might be the most, I don't want to say controversial name, but there's, he's in the news frequently, even if it has nothing to do with football, right? He's somebody that everybody's yeah. watching. Everybody's, and you know, right or wrong, he does get, this this reputation where it seems like people either love the guy or hate the guy and i don't know i i've never met him i only go through what i see in the media or what i see on social media you yeah. protect that guy for eight years you should have a locker room with him what can you, what can you tell us about your time number 12 the the bet uh, all right it's funny that you say that because literally everyone's like oh you play pro ball we're at i'm like green bay and like the second question is always How's Aaron Rodgers? Like literally, yep. I, I could put it on repeat, and that, I say the same thing. I'm like, he's an awesome dude. You know, what I mean, like, like I, I think some people take like the couple like headlines or or <coughs> articles wrote about him and kind of run and make their own thoughts about him. But you know, I think anyone that watched Hard Knocks this year, like, it, it was a really good example of like who he was. Like, like that guy that's like running around like a little grown kid, like teasing people and stuff like that or like or like doing like silly stuff like that's that's him it's like he has a good personality he's like awesome dude he like he was part of my development and like i have nothing but good things to say about her see it's funny so i was uh when you when you google pictures of lane taylor like 50 percent of them are lane and aaron doing the like linking yeah. the arms where you're getting all jacked up after a big play. I'm like, I wonder if that was their own thing or if that's just, they were hyped up and it just happened that way. I don't know. Did you guys have any, like, not a secret hand? Well, maybe you had a secret handshake. I don't know. Anything like that? Or was I it guess, just, you know, I guess in a way it was a secret handshake, but uh, it just, that could be kind of came our thing. And it was kind of part of like that, like 2016 run whenever we kind of caught fire 
and it's just like something we like kind of i think we did like in preseason a little bit but then we kind of stunk at the beginning of 2016 so like there wasn't a lot to celebrate about but like once we kind of caught on fire it kind of became our thing and um something we kind of did all right so we were talking about hard knocks uh before the show and i want to ask again uh so obviously you watch it i actually have two questions here number one is do does hard knocks do a good job of capturing the real atmosphere of what being on an NFL team is like, or, or are these teams kind of like amping up the intensity and amping up the, the theatrics of it because they know the cameras are rolling? Um, I think, I think they do a good job. I honestly, I really do. I think they do a good job of all of it, narrating it. The only thing is from like a player's perspective is they make it a lot cooler than it actually is. Like, cause I mean, you know, they're not in there like the other, like 10 hours that you're in film room and (laughs) and training and stuff. But like, but like overall though, like they do a good job of it. I I like it. I still watch it today. All right. That's fair. Uh, my wife, we have no problems dropping the F bomb from time to time, but my wife is totally off, off how frequently Seemingly, the defensive coordinators on these teams are like every other word is an f bomb. And is that is what you're seeing? Is it after f bomb locker room? <laughs> yeah, I mean, some coaches they they got a little bit of potty mouth. I'd have to say, um, yeah, that's just how some <laughs> usually usually it's like the older coaches are like that. But um, but that's just kind of how they express themselves. <laughs> so, uh, all right, but yeah, yeah that's every fine. coach is different. So Matt Coakley on Twitter, coming back to Aaron Rodgers real quick. Matt Coakley on Twitter wants to know if you have a funniest or a funny Aaron Rodgers story. Oh, man. There was so many, like, little moments. I can't remember, like, one specifically. I wish I could, I wish I could have one. This one no, I'm you thinking have of. <laughs> There's one I can't say. But uh, oh, right, uh, but there was, there was, there was plenty, of, plenty of moments and stuff. Um, All right. But, yeah. Let's talk about the new quarterback, number 10. I I know, you know, he's obviously, you didn't get a chance to play with him this year, or you, yeah. you didn't, the The timeline doesn't match up, right? Were you, did you, were you guys in the same locker room at the same time? Yeah, he was there in 2020. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. Mm-hmm. What's your, what's your evaluation of him? Like, this year was insane. Yeah. Like, the, there, I, I forgot what I was watching recently, but they were talking about the, how unreal it how unreal it was to watch his like kind of glow up during the season. Like he he, he yeah. was fine in the first half, and then the second half of the season he went nuts. What's your? I know you and I were texting about it a while back, and you were talking about the off platform throws. What's your evaluation just from everything you've seen in twelve now watching number ten? But man, I'm I'm super excited for him. Man, he went out there and balled out, especially there at the end. But like you could tell the like. Yeah, he's a good football player. He's not. He wasn't just like lightning in a bottle and just you know made some huge plays and stuff. Like, because I mean, I think we talked about it earlier in the, in the year. Like, I was like, he's making off script plays. <clears throat> he has the off off platform throws. You can tell he's making checks up the line. It's just like the guys weren't executing early off in the year, and then like I think everything really came together there at the end, and it was really and then it amplified what he was doing more. And like, and uh, so I'm happy. There was a lot of haters, and you know, at first everyone was like, "Be patient, you know, give Jordan Jordan love some time." And then like four games in, everyone was like, "Burn out, burn, <laughs> get him out of there, <laughs> burn down the house." Like, yeah. <laughs> we got to we got to clean clean house and all that. So uh, I'm glad like everything came together. That's what see. That's what we were talking about earlier. Football fans, man, it's a it's a passionate game. Like, and a lot of them, you know, they see yeah. one game and they think you can judge everything off of that one game but yeah man i gotta say as a packer fan i'm obviously really excited right like the year that he had but then knowing that all of his pass catchers were first and second year receivers and they're the youngest team in the league i I mean if you're a packer fan right now is a good time to be a packer fan it's so exciting and my favorite part and no offense to my i have a lot of friends who are bears fans and a lot of subscribers that are bears fans but no offense one of my favorite part parts of it all is just watching bears like what do we got to do to get these quarterbacks out of green Bay. But anyway. Right. <laughs> it's kind of comical. Uh, <laughs> all right. So several people, I had a lot of people ask this. You're obviously a good dude, Lane. It seems like you enjoyed the company of pretty much all your teammates. Are there any 
that come to mind as your favorite teammates that you ever played with? Um, man, there's so many, so many good dudes. Uh, you know, I got to show a little love to my, my boy, Dave Bakhtiari. Um, we, we came. He's cool in the news right now. Years. Yeah. He, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and my boy, uh, JC Treader, we, we get close to. And, uh, so, but I mean, there's so many awesome dudes that I play sure. with. Like it's hard just to like a couple. I think that's one of my favorite parts about watching Hard Knocks is being, again, we go back to the human element of being humans, being people, and you see these guys strike up these genuine friendships, and they really do feel they're going to war with their their comrades, you know, their buddies. So that's yep. that's one of my favorite parts that I, I wish NFL fans could see more of is those, like, personal relationships that they get. Um, all right. So I saw, I think this was, fa- this became a famous question because of Stefan Diggs. Jamie Stecker, well, I'm going to ask this two different ways. Jamie Stecker on Facebook, she wants to know if you have, and I don't know if you have a sister or if you had a sister, who in your eight years, who on the Packers would you let her date? And I want to know who on the Packers would you not let your sister date? Oh, uh, easy. The the first one would be Jordy. You know, I'm like, you're in good hands. You're with Jordy. Like, <laughs> you're be point, safe in point. the country, just farming and stuff. <laughs> uh, who I want it? Oh, man. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I think I'll pass on that one. I'll pass on that one. <laughs> All right. Did you, did you see the video with Stefan Diggs in the Vikings locker room? Yeah, I think I saw it a little while back, yeah. Like everybody, like ten straight teammates. Oh, Stefan. They're like Stefan. 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 Cool. <laughs> <laughs> After working his way from undrafted free agent to playing one hundred percent of the offensive snaps, protecting a future Hall of Fame quarterback, it's pretty clear that Lane Taylor is the ultimate high achiever. And you can be too. If you want to be the ultimate high achiever and make the absolute most out of this one life that you're given, then you need to get in touch with Paul Conley from High Achievers. High Achievers is a mastermind group helping men grow, achieve big goals, and develop friendships that are lifelong and meaningful. Yours truly is a member of this group, and it meets every single week on Thursdays, helping each other professionally and personally, and helping each one of us become better fathers, better husbands, better professionals, better entrepreneurs, better men, and quite frankly, better humans. Get in touch with Paul Conley from the High Achievers using the notes that are left for you in the show notes. All right. Um, let's talk Des Bryant real quick. So it's funny. So you played with him at Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah. And Justin Blackman, who we should talk about if we get time. But you played with Des at Oklahoma State. I actually, if you go to my website, basementbrewedff.com, yeah. you'll, he's, you'll, he's the first face you'll see. He's in my intro for the podcast because I interviewed him at the Fantasy Football Expo. And, of course, I I'm a Packer fan, and we had to talk about the catch or no catch. You play with him. He's probably a friend of yours. Did he catch that football? Catch what football? I don't know what you're oh, talking about. On, I saw man. no catch. I mean, yeah. he was all out of control and he was reaching for the pl- pylon. I don't know what you're talking about, man. There's no way he caught that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. It's funny because, right, like, enough. if that play happened, like, what four years later, it probably would have been a catch, <laughs> but at the time, we didn't know what a catch was. So. Dude, it's <laughs> every year they change it, and still nobody knows, which is crazy. If you go in the backyard with your buddies, you know what's a catch and what's not a catch. It does, I feel like it's overcomplicated at this point, but right, looking at you. all right, man. So, we talked earlier about uh, earlier, you said something along the lines of you know, the product is better when there's not flags flying all over the place, and players play better. For some reason, one question that I'm getting more frequently nowadays than I ever have before is about whether or not the NFL rigs football games. And I'm just going to leave it at that. What do what? How do you react when you hear people questioning whether or not the NFL rigs football games or scripts it? All right. Now, when I play, all right. In reality, no, they don't. There's no way. It's so impossible to even do that. But like, I see now that I'm able to like bet on games. I'm like. It seems like it's rigged sometimes, right? Because you have someone, you know, minus six, and they're blowing a team out until, like, the fourth quarter or something, and then they come back and almost, and, like, <laughs> get a last-second field goal, <laughs> and you lose your bet. You're like, there's no way, right? But uh, <laughs> but, there's, but it's impossible to script games. Yeah. I think what a lot of people are, are think they're catching on to 
is that like, oh shoot, that pass was incomplete. So let's let's call a defensive pass interference so that they can keep the ball moving, that sort of thing. I don't know. To me, it's 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 nuts. It's crazy. Right. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's all highlighted because of betting in DFS because of those bad beats where it's like you need something to happen and then the opposite yeah. happens. But all right, I want to go through some rapid fire stuff. So it's just some like random audience questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I already sent you this video, so you know what to expect, but my son wants to know. Hey, Mr. Taylor, I have two questions for you. What's your favorite Pokemon and what's your favorite food? Pokemon, you know, I got to keep it classic, you know, a little Pikachu. I mean, Come on now, like you got the lightning bolt coming from the sky. So. Like, come on, that's it's kind of sick. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. So he, I, I told him that your favorite might be Snorlax. I don't know how. I don't even know if you watch Pokemon or if you know anything about it. But Snorlax is this offensive yeah. lineman looking Pokemon that yeah. loves to just like eat. So I'm like, that seems like. <laughs> uh, my daughter, and you saw this video. She wants What's to know your favorite Disney princess. You know what? This is a tough one. Yeah, because having two girls, I know my Disney princesses. You know, and we have a new wave of princesses coming in. Uh, you know, kind of the new school princesses, but uh, just to kind of pay respect to my daughter, she's a big Ariel fan, so I have to go with my Ariel. That's, there we go. My daughter's number one is Ariel, and Cinderella <laughs> is her number two. Although she gonna watch this tomorrow, and she's gonna be like, "No, it's Ariel" or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> nice. Um. What's your what was your favorite city and or stadium to play in? Man, I okay, I liked playing in Minnesota. Um, I got hurt like every single time I played there, but like the actual stadium itself is pretty cool. Okay. Um, just kind of like it's new, it was fancy, but like from like a vibe standpoint, it was probably Levi Stadium, the old San Fran Stadium. That place, no, uh -huh. it was kind of a dump. But like the like vibe and like the crowd and everything was like unbelievable, and it was my first yeah. road game. But like the the vibe there was like unmatched. Got it. All right, dig that, man. Hold uh, on. Who hold was on. your favorite? It was it was like Candlestick, what? wasn't it? Was it Candlestick? I said Levi. Back then. Yeah. I think. Quick Google search: Candlestick yeah. Stadium. Uh, Candlestick Park. Is that right? That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it? It was Candlestick at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't see. Well, I closed in 2014, so that's right okay, about okay. when you got started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. What? Uh, who was your favorite football team growing up? I I have a guess here, but I'm I want to hear from you. Actually, you won't believe it, but I I honestly I didn't have one. Okay. Like, Were I, you a, a, true, more college? True, I didn't. Even, I didn't real. I didn't. Re I didn't like any team to tell you the truth. Like I just kind of played ball. I didn't like really care what who's favorite. Obviously, like I followed the Cowboys just because they're they're here in town. But like, right. I wasn't like a diehard. All right, that that was my guess because you're that's your hometown. <laughs> yeah. And then I didn't know if you going to play for Houston at the end if there was a little bit of a like a not a homecoming but just coming home coming back to Texas. Yeah, um, it was cool. It was cool. What was the most uncomfortable road atmosphere, whether that's fans, weather, stadium? Like, where was it toughest to play, I guess I should say? Okay, to tell you the truth, I never I never liked playing at um, Soldier Field. Because one, if it was late in the year, the field sucked. Two, the facilities kind of stunk. And three, it was the Bears. <laughs> but, uh, <Right. coughs> I mean, other than that, the uh, Philly fans were pretty rowdy. They uh, they right. make it. Oh tough. yeah! Don't you dare get oh. hurt on Philadelphia Field because they'll boo you yeah. off that. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, bad. definitely. Best tasting Gatorade. Ooh, tough. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm I mean, partial I'm to purple. Purple, really? Oh no! Great. Like, no? if I'm getting it from the gas station, I'm probably you know, getting that Glacier Frost, Glacier yeah. Freeze, whatever it is, the blue one cool blue like can't beat the blue ones or the orange all right well you said if you're getting it from the gas station what are you getting it out of the orange jug sign mm. out of that orange jug i don't think there's a bad taste in one out of that orange jug <laughs> you're so right, thirsty 
Mm. While we're talking about drinking stuff on the football field, Travis Kelsey just answered this. How come football players don't squirt their own water? What's up with that? <laughs> the only time I didn't like to is like getting my gloves like super wet. Because then once oh. my gloves are wet, it's hard to block. Um, That's fair. <laughs> but I mean, some people, I, I mean, for the most part, like especially in practice, like I always like grab my own water, kind of old school a little bit. But like, yeah, yeah it's just, it's, I guess it's a preference thing. Sometimes like, I've been to some places that like trainers will get mad if they let players squirt their own water, you know, I guess cause it's more like energy exerted or something, I guess. But, uh, I get, no, might as well. any, I, I any it. advantage you can. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and smash or pass the Packers, all white uniforms. Uh, for a skinny person. Yeah. I like them <laughs> for the big guys. They weren't too, they weren't too pleasant for the big guys. <laughs> All right. What about all yellow? Um, no, but the all greens are sick. All green, all oh, greens. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, sick. Uh, speaking of uniforms, who's got the best ones in the NFL? Who's got the best unis? Best un. Oh man, those throwback Dolphins uniforms. Oh yeah, are so Dolphins. clean, so clean. I'm all about the Buccaneers creamsicles from like the 80s or 90s or whatever. I oh love yeah, those. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah, uh, cool. they brought them back this year, which was sweet. And the Titan, they brought back the Houston Oilers unis. Those were pretty sweet, too. Oh, yeah, those are hard to beat, too. Yep. All right, man. Uh, two more, real quick. What is the toughest position to play in the NFL? Uh, quarterback. That's easy. Court. Okay. What if it's not quarterback? Uh, probably corner. Because it's so reactive. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah the, it, the reaction is crazy. Like... And you're co you're covering like world class athletes, like it it's hard. Yeah, that's that's always been my that's always been my answer. Where it's like you have to cover a world class athlete who knows exactly where he's going. Yeah. You have to figure it out, not touch them when the ball's in the air, and like it's oh, and you're dealing with quarterbacks that can place the ball wherever they want. It's like they, it's, yeah. I can't think of a more difficult position besides quarterback, perhaps. You know, right. Um. All right, this is one that I was literally just thinking about uh, the other night. When you're at home, you're watching football, do you think you watch the game the same way a fan watches a game? Like, fans typically watch the ball. They see where it's snapped, they yeah. see where it's handed, where they're throwing. Do you watch, like, the offensive line? Do you think you watch it the same as a regular fan does? No, I always, I'm always watching the line or watching, Are like, matchup. Yeah, I'm watching matchups. Like, I'll see sacks coming right before they come, and, like, I'll see, like, Awesome. They won't pick up a pressure, and I'll be like, "Uh oh!" And then everyone's like, "What?" And then boom, sack. <laughs> so like, I'm All always right, dude, watching. So I'm always playing catch up. I asked you earlier if you're getting back in the game. Maybe it's broadcasting, dude. Get, like call, doing the call your shot thing, seeing those sacks coming. No, All right, go. man. So you let's talk about your wife and her business real quick, man. I know she yeah. she started her own thing. I think you told me she's opening up her second location. Talk about it. Floor's yours. Yeah, yeah. She's uh. She just opened up her second boutique here in uh, Alito, Texas. Um, our, our we acquired one, the original one in Stillwater, Oklahoma, um, where we went to school. So, like, I'm super excited for her. Like, she's been stay at home mom, taking care of all the kiddos, and now she's like getting out doing her own thing. Um, it's been a big success already, and like, it, it's a little different than your average like boutique, and like, it's like kind of a one one stop shop, and like. Um, no, I'm super excited for her, and, and she's doing good, and um, and she'll have fun with it. That's awesome, man. I love to hear it. where uh, where does she have a website people can check out? And I'll make sure we put it in the show notes too. Okay, yeah, it's like a rhinestone cowgirl dot com, and um, and that that'll probably take you to the one there in uh, in Stillwater, and she's working on the one here. You know, so, but you can you can check her out on, uh, um. Uh, Instagram, like a uh, like rhinestone cowgirl. Uh, this one is still water, and then now there's one in the Lido. Love it, man. Awesome. So, everybody who's listening, watching, I'm going to leave all of that right in the show notes. So, make sure you give her a follow, check out the website. Also, check out uh, Follow Lane, especially if you love barbecue, dude. I'm telling you, those recipes that he's putting out there, just absolute fire. <laughs> Lane, man. This was awesome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for powering through and making this the yeah. uh, Lane Taylor flu game, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I'll put, I'll put it was as good as MJ. So 
Hey, man, thanks for having me on. I had fun. I love talking football, barbecue, all things. So uh, it, it was fun, man. Love it, man. You'll be back on. Don't worry. Be sure to tune in on Tuesday morning to our second episode of BBFF's Inside the 20, where we're going to continue our discussion on new faces in new places. If you missed episode one, we talked about the fantasy football impact of Jim Harbaugh joining the LA Chargers, as well as Cliff Kingsbury joining the Washington Commanders. And on Tuesday, episode two, we're going to continue that discussion on what some of these new faces in new places might look like including some speculative discussion about where some offensive free agents might be going, such as uh, Derek Henry, Austin Eckler, Josh Jacobs, Calvin Ridley. Let's talk a little bit about where Justin Fields might be going. So again, be sure to tune in on Tuesday morning, episode two, BBFF's Inside the 20. If you enjoyed this conversation with Lane Taylor and you liked this episode, then go ahead and like this episode. Get it? Because of the thumbs up button, the like button? No? All jokes aside, please go ahead and like the episode, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on podcast, please, please, please do me a solid and leave a five-star rating and review. That stuff goes so much further than you can possibly imagine. If you did not like this episode, go ahead and keep that to yourself. If you want to hang out with me in between episodes between now and Tuesday morning, find me on Twitter at BBFFMikey, find me on TikTok at BBFFMikey, and find me on LinkedIn at Mikey Henninger with no C, M-I-K-E-Y Henninger, H-E-N-N-I-N-G-E-R. And of course, if you watched this episode and you were drooling when we were talking about barbecue, you got to follow Lane Taylor on Instagram at Lane Taylor 65 Last but not least, just a last minute reminder, the first five listeners that use promo code in the trenches, all one word, all caps, the first five listeners that use promo code in the trenches on basementbrewedff.com, they are going to get 20% off of their subscription to the BBFF starter package. That's all I got for you today. Again, tune in on Tuesday morning. We'll talk to you then. Cheers. This brew's for you. Oh,